Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We've got a great show for you guys today. We're going to be covering the NBA playoff series games that happened last night. We'll also be talking about Dak Prescott and his future with the Dallas Cowboys. We'll also be covering could schools face bankruptcy from the name, image, and likeness lawsuit. And make sure you guys stick around for later in the show when we'll be diving into the Keeping the Faith Feel Good story of the week. Before we start, though, I wanted to ask that you guys like and follow the show. Also, we get a number of questions from viewers that come in during the show. So to ensure that your question gets read on the air, I ask that you use the tips and donation link with your question. Uh, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. This just puts your question at the top of the list so I can see it, and it also really helps the show. I'm going to have to get like a clacker board for you. <laughs> Faith is putting all my business out on the street. Everyone. I am not putting all your business out on the street. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm in the safe zone. Safe Faith is like, I, oh, we're recording. I'm over here asking about should I run to the restroom or not? And Faith is Well, like, I always ask before I hit the streaming button. I'm like, okay, Tate, are you ready? And you're like, yes, I'm ready. And so then that for me is my cue to start streaming. <laughs> and Tate's over here about talking about running the restroom. Well, you can't now. Yeah, so <laughs> Hopefully I got a strong bladder, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> or this episode's gonna be brought to you by the pens. <laughs> How Jeez. are you doing, Faith? I'm good. I'm doing good. It's a lovely, uh, lovely, lovely Tuesday morning. I like the the what that's not lace. What would you call that? It's more sheer in your shirt. Um Oh gosh, I could have told you until you asked me. Um. <laughs> well, it looks it looks awesome. You. you look you look amazing as always. Thank you. So, okay. So, have you been uh keeping an eye on things as far as the NBA is it just is starting to heat up here, so Have I been keeping an eye on it? Yes. Um these games happened kind of late last night, so <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I was in bed your, you, by nine o'clock last night. <laughs> you gotta step your game up. <laughs> listen, listen. I am doing the best that I can right now, but I do have to get up early in the morning for this show. So it's either Faith stays up and watch watches all the games, um, and she's groggy in the morning, or she goes to bed at a decent time and she's nice and. Uh, peppy in the morning so <laughs> <laughs> although he i'm gonna to tell you yesterday you yesterday i saw you you were like holding so hard trying not to yawn like three different times you're like yeah. oh god I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm about to burst here uh you're talking about starting late i think that laker game for me started at 3 a.m in the morning yeah no so hi <laughs> <laughs> so I get up in the morning and then I watch the game. So the mm -hmm. games are over. Do you know how hard it is to watch games after and they're over? Yes, but you don't you don't want anyone, you know, you don't want anything to show you. So you're like <laughs> you don't want anybody nope. spoiling anything. Well, no, nope, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to watch this. I'm not going to do yeah. this. So I got to watch the games with not someone, you know, ruin it for you is mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. Especially you know, alerts on your phone. Mm -hmm. You you go to YouTube and give me and things, and you know it's just kind of hard to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Alrighty. So, well, all right. I, I'm getting over to the left of here. I'm getting some signals, and I'm I'm just kind of yeah. So, so <laughs> okay. was inquiring. This, if we were actually live yet oh, so i'm like yes I'm we like... are <laughs> <laughs> so and i keep getting a signal and i'm like i'm trying to concentrate on my girl faith over here right now <laughs> all right so. so okay so let's just dive right into this we're going to start off with the nuggets and the lakers so jamal murray sinks a shot at the buzzer to cap a 20 point comeback and lead nuggets past the lakers 101 to 99. Uh, jamal murray didn't even see the biggest basket of his career at least not live he didn't murray swished a step back 15 footer over Anthony Davis at the buzzer Monday night, giving the Denver Nuggets a stunning 101 to 99 over the 
win over the Los Angeles Lakers and capping a comeback from a 20-point second half deficit. Murray tumbled into the Nuggets bench along with Davis just as his shot fluttered the net and roar from the crowd shot uh, shook ball arena. Um, I just lost my balance and fell. I think AD was in my way or somebody was in my way and I just heard everybody scream and that's how I knew it went in, said Murray, who was mobbed by his teammates after his bucket gave the reigning NBA champion their 10th consecutive win over the Lakers. More importantly, it gave Denver a 2-0 lead in their Western Conference series that shifts to Los Angeles for Game 3 uh, Thursday night. Uh, Murray missed 13 of his first 16 shots and was easily the most flustered, frazzled, and frustrated of all his teammates when it appeared the Nuggets would lose to the Lakers for the first time in 494 days. I told my teammates I was struck when I was struggling. I'm going to look for y'all, and every single one of them told me to keep shooting, recounted Murray, who uh, did just who did just in going 6 for 8 and 14 points in the fourth quarter to finish with 20 points. Um, so, big. Okay big shot at the end of the game first off you know how yesterday i described the series like that that christmas movie mm -hmm. that you see every year you don't want to watch it but someone has it on somewhere you said it's different this time <laughs> this one was this one was different mm -hmm. do you watch horror movies i love them yes love horror movies okay give me some of your favorite ones like um, I, I like the old school ones, like Freddy Cougar and Jason, those guys. Uh, let's Who are see. yours? Uh, the Conjuring is my top number one on my list. The Conjuring. Yeah, I don't know. The, still, I don't know that one at still all. Still terrifies me. Um, gosh, I don't know. You put me on the spot here. The Conjuring is my number one, though. That is my number one horror movie. Well, here's the thing. The reason why I bring up a horror movie is at some point during the horror movie. Mm -hmm. the the evil person you think he's dead mm -hmm. he's dead it's over mm -hmm. finally we killed jason finally we killed freddy cougar yep. finally michael myers canceled christmas he's done mm -hmm. and everyone relaxes and there and he the comes happens. again yeah and then he's <laughs> back again yeah mm -hmm. where well freddy cougar jason Michael Margaret Myers, Nikola Jokic, it's all the same. Jokic was that guy. He was he was that he was that that beast that I was afraid of that I thought he was dead. LeBron going off. Anthony Davis going off. Mm -hmm. We had a sighting mm -hmm. of D'Angelo Russell in a playoff game against the Nuggets. That is like seeing the Dodo bird. It doesn't exist anymore. That's an extinct species. But D'Angelo Russell was out there, clean, looking good. D'Angelo Russell, I was like, man, I'm, this is this is all we needed. The Lakers are up 20. The Lakers are rolling. You know, Freddy Cougar's dead. Michael Myers is dead. Jason's dead. And so is the Jokic. Mm -hmm. And then it was the same old movie we got every time. Lakers start out strong, third quarter, Denver comes rallying back. Next thing you know, the biggest lead since I think it was like 19, let me see what how long ago it was, like in the 1990s, that was the, the biggest the, the biggest lead they'd given up since the 1990s. There were 20 points up. Denver went on an 18 to nine run. Mer LeBron goes down, and I know what LeBron was thinking. LeBron, the game is coming down to the end, and LeBron is trying to put the dagger mm -hmm. and kill him. Finally, he fires that shot. It goes, it goes awry. Murray goes down the court. AD picks him up. Solid defense. Nothing wrong with AD. AD was just absolutely perfect. Fired his shot. Bam. And the Lakers are dead. <laughs> it was just, it was a, it was a horror movie. It was. This is exactly what the Lakers were expecting to do. That they, that it, the, the, the script that needed to be written on how the Lakers can win this series. 
You had to have LeBron go off. You had to have AD go off. You needed a supporting third member. That was D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell did his thing. They jumped out to an early lead. I'm thinking, wow, and they're getting Vanderbilt back the next game. The Lakers got a shot here. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, Michael oh my Myers God. comes back. Jason, hell breaks you know, up. <laughs> Jokic. Jokic, another triple, triple double, an 18 to nine run. Uh, I mean, you think Murray, 14 points in the fourth quarter. There was no stopping Murray. Uh, Nikola Jokic or Freddy Cougar, whichever one you want to call them, <laughs> triple double, 27, 20, and 10. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just like, imagine you saying, we put up our best game against Denver in two years mm -hmm. and we lost. And you lost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see, you understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. It's like, man. They're they're in trouble now. Yeah. I, I I think I'm hoping that the Lakers, it's sad to say this, because nothing the saying is, like I said, the series doesn't start until you lose lose a game at home. But I kind of feel like I feel like as a Laker fan, can we get one game? <laughs> That's what, you know. <laughs> is it sad that if they won one game, that would be an improvement? Mm -hmm. This is ten straight games they have lost to the Nuggets. These are the Lakers. I truly believe this. I think the Lakers could totally make it to the finals if they could get past this series. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they can get past this finals. This this mm -hmm. series. This series is too much. Jokic and Murray are just too good. Uh, the Lakers, they're just built for to just choke the Lakers. Mm -hmm. And that's just exactly what it was. Yeah. So you can see why I consider it the <laughs> Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy yeah. Krueger, yeah. uh, Nikola Jokic. Mm -hmm. Those those are those are the things that I wake up. Those are my horror movies right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you you know Jokic is kind of like Frankenstein a little bit. He's kind of stiff, a little uncoordinated, but unstoppable. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If you watch him, rarely do you see anything. You don't. He's not an impressive guy. He's just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. He's the best player in the game doing it uglier than everyone else has done it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a, it's a, it's so ugly that it's a thing of beauty watching mm -hmm. Nikola Jokic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my, that is my take on that one. Okay. Got we can, it. We can so... put me, put me out of my misery and let's, <laughs> let's move on to another game. <laughs> Tate's worst nightmare are NBA players. Uh, so <laughs> Nikola Jokic, that is my Freddy Cougar and Jason. I'm just letting y'all know. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, <laughs> moving on from that, we are now going to be talking about the Knicks versus the 76ers. Um. So, uh, Dante D. Vin D. Vincenzo caps desperate rally yes. with three pointers Knicks beats the 76ers 104 to 101 to take a 2 and 0 lead an 8 point lead was gone the Knicks edged in the series and home court advantage seemed about to follow Madison Square Garden had fallen nearly silent i mean it wasn't a good feeling dante said moments later it was a uh, bedlam uh, dante made a go ahead three pointer with 13 seconds remaining after a desperate scramble in new york beat the Phil uh, philadelphia 76ers 104 to 101 on Monday night to take a 2-0 lead in their first round playoff series. The Knicks trailed by five points within the final 30 seconds before one of the most stunning rallies in playoff history, starting when Jalen Brunson finally got a shot to fall during an otherwise miserable shooting night. Brunson's three-pointer from the center bounced on the rim and fell in, cutting to a 101-99 with 27 seconds remaining.
claiming Josh Hart stole the bar from uh, Tyrese Max. Maxi to get the ball back from the Knicks, um, but Dante missed a three-pointer. Um, Isaiah Hortenstein grabbed the rebound and passed it to OG um, Anub- Anub- Anubi. Anobi. Anobi. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, which got it back to Dante, who hit that to make, who hit that one to make one hundred two to one hundred one. It was hectic. It was crazy. But at that point, we had nothing to lose. Hart said. Got to get as physical as we can and it panned out so another another uh (laughs) no No, this was this was different same i mean this different but the same (laughs) yeah it was the same as the game was before yeah this is what i looked at when i watched this game Mm -hmm. one team it was clear Mm -hmm. it is crystal clear that the best two players on the court, the best two players on both teams belong with the Philadelphia 76ers. You know, Tyrese Maxey was was a force. 35 points, played 44 minutes. He, you know, 10 assists, nine rebounds, almost got a got a triple double. Joel L and Bede possibly the best player in the league our our current mvp you know he played 39 minutes i'm shocked over that mm. he played 39 minutes it's a big surprise 34 points 10 rebounds six assists those two guys were were just amazing but it always comes down to this is one thing that so many people miss out on and make that mistake. And I feel like sometimes the Lakers make the same mistake. Two players do not make a team. Hence the reason why we were just talking about that last uh, last series, the Lakers in Denver, the better team won. Well, when you look around and you're saying that 69, almost 70 points was made between two players and the Mm -hmm. rest of your team didn't even, I don't even think the rest of your team even got 30 points combined, everybody on the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. But then you look at the Knicks, the Knicks hard nose played solid defense, evenly dispersed, whether it was, whether it was OG with 10 points, Josh Hart again, Josh Hart, amazing. 21 points there. Um, Isaiah got 14. Uh, Jalen Brunson on fire, 24. Uh, Dante Devin, I always say Devin Tenzo, got to get that one right, 19. <laughs> uh, McBride coming off the bench with nine. Uh, Bogdanovich got six. My whole point is, it was a complete team win. Mm-hmm. Every you got you got your bench involved. I mean, when you're when you're looking at you got sixteen off the bench. Both teams both teams played uh, you know pretty much the same players off the bench. So those had three guys off the bench, but the Knicks just played a better game. They a better team game. Yeah. As I as I said before, the the best two players were clearly on the Knicks side. Mm-hmm. But I me mean, best on the Philadelphia 76ers side, like I said. Uh, but when you look at that overall, the better defense, the better overall team. And the other thing that really hurt them, Joel Embiid as the he was a force, but as the game rolled on, you could tell he he was getting slower and slower. Mm-hmm. That injury was starting to bother him. His effectiveness started to slide. As his effectiveness slid, that's when the Knicks started moving ahead. And, and slowly and slowly, as the game went on, Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid is doing everything under the sun to keep the 76ers into it. But he's rolling on one on a, he got he's he's rolling on a flat, and you, it was very obvious that 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 injury was bothering him, mm-hmm. and 
you know, it cost them. It was a close game. They could have won this game. And then you had a series. Then you had a real yeah. series. But the better team won. Mm-hmm. So, okay, what do we have next? Um, we also have the Cavaliers and um, Magic, Orlando Magic. Um, so uh, Donovan Mitchell scores 23 as Cavaliers power to a 96-86 win over Magic and a 2-0 and lead in the series. Um, throughout the two games, the Cavaliers have been uh, tough guys in these playoffs. This year, uh, they're the bullies. Uh, Donovan Mitchell scored 23 points. Jarrett Allen had 20 rebounds and Cleveland outlasted the Orlando Magic 96-86 on Monday night in a second straight uh, slugfest to take a 2-0 and lead in their first round Eastern Conference series. Um, it's been an impressive opening for the uh, Cavaliers who spent the regular season waiting for a chance to redeem themselves following last year's first round exit against the New York Knicks who punished Cleveland in five games. Uh, the Cavs were labeled soft, especially Allen who was criticized for saying the lights were too bright. Uh, they flipped the script so far. It was very satisfying, Allen said. It shows that we've grown not only as a team but as individuals. We're not folding under pressure. We do have our moments but as a whole i feel like we've taken a huge step uh mitchell set the tone as the Cavs led from start to finish just as they did in game one uh evan mobley added 17 points and allen scored 16 with nine offensive re- rebounds for cleveland um he's the third player in team history to get 20 rebounds in a playoff game joining joining kevin love 21 and brad uh daughtery uh with 20 um it means a lot allen said it's good company okay this literally, this was a defensive battle, mm-hmm. and the rebounding was the key. Mm-hmm. That's what separated these two. When you look at Max, he had nine rebounds for the Cavs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Evans had seven. Uh, you said just said Jared Allen twenty rebound twenty big rebounds. Mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell he had eight. Garland had three. Mm-hmm. That was the difference in the game, right? Because when you're when you when you're crashing the boards, you're pulling down the rebounds. No one really had a huge game. When you look around and you're like, Donovan Mitchell had twenty three points. He was twenty three eight and four. That's mm-hmm. what his that's what his stat line was. Really, that's just okay. But when you have a team cleaning the glass the way the Cavaliers did, Mm -hmm. those offensive rebounds were enormous. Mm -hmm. And defensively, they really shut down the Magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Magic shot 36% uh, from the field, 20, uh, and uh, let's see, yeah, 20 and 25.7 from from three-point land. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't uh, shoot poorly, right? Re- and, and and get dominated on the boards. Mm-hmm. That is a recipe for team getting smoke. Yeah. And the Cavalier the Cavaliers are just showing. It's kind of weird because some people there was a number of people that took the Magic to win this series. And the knack, uh, the the kind of the the. The word about the Cavaliers, they're they're soft. Well, guess what? The Cavaliers are the tougher team. (laughs) Yes. Who's soft now? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's like, yeah, yeah. Until you get you you corner them and he punches Mm -hmm. you in the nose. Yeah. Then we talk about who really is soft. The Mm -hmm. Cavaliers are playing really Cavaliers Mm -hmm. are playing textbook textbook basketball. Yeah. Playing solid defense quality rebounding and no one is really dominating when when you look at Mitchell and you say 23 points from Mitchell okay you know mm-hmm. that's not when 23 points is your is your your leading score that's not a great game but that's what the Cavaliers do the Cavaliers are there to play defense and rebound and and shut down Orlando, and it is working like mm-hmm. a charm. Yeah, uh, Cavaliers are up by two. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how this series changes mm-hmm. in Orlando because when you're a young team, Faith, 
Mm -hmm. When shooting, for some reason, when you're younger, when you go home, you shoot at a much higher clip. And so I want to see, does does that improve? Does the three-point shooting improve? Mm -hmm. Does their overall shooting percentages improve? Does their rebounding improve when they're at home? Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't, this series is over. Yeah. But it's not over yet. This is mm -hmm. this is one that could go down to the wire. Mm -hmm. I want to see how Orlando performs in Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. It'll be interesting to see. Um, but with that, guys, we're going to take uh, our first break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, Dak Prescott and his future with the Dallas Cowboys. So make sure you guys stick around and we will be back in a minute. 